Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel blog post. A while back I did a blog post on how to dynamically set your print area so that every time you add or delete rows it'll automatically adjust and only print that range of your data. And then a couple months ago I did an update so that you can use various columns to identify which has the most items and use that to identify or to determine your print range. But recently I received a request saying how do I modify the formula so that it will only print the last few rows where the last column has cells that are blank. So let's take a look and see how we can modify our formula to make a dynamic print area in Excel. So again, I referenced two previous blog posts that I did and I'll put the link to those in the notes below so you can reference those and I would suggest watching them to better understand how this process works. But basically, I'll try to run through it real quickly. If I have a range like this, and I do a control P to print, notice it's going to want to print everything. It's going to print the blank rows that I have in my range, and it's even going to want to print the rest of the formulas that I have uh, that string out all the way into column W. If I want to define a print area, let's say I select this as my print area, but before I do that, I'm just going to go over to the formulas tab and open up the name manager and you'll see it's blank. There's nothing in there right now. But if I go in and I set a print area, I go to the page layout, print area, set print area. Now when I do a control P, it will only print that area that I defined. And if we go back to the formulas tab and the name manager, you see now there's an entry there where it defines the print area as sheet 1 A1 to H26. That's perfect. But if I only want to print only the rows that I have data, say for example, I'll use column C as my defining column, I would use a formula such as this, which is the offset function. And offset basically says start at a reference point, go down so many rows, go over so many columns, then tell me how many rows high and how many columns wide you want to create that range. So in this case, I'm saying start at A1, go down zero rows, go over zero columns, and then use the count of function to tell me how many rows high. So in here, it's going to count from A1 down to A17 and how many columns wide. So in this case, eight. That's from column A to column H. So what I would do here is I would use this formula, and I'm going to just copy it so I don't have to type it in. I'm going to go to Name Manager, and I'm going to create a new item, and I'm going to call it Mike Print. And I'm going to copy that formula in there, and I'll say OK. Then I'll select my Print Area 1, hit Edit, and instead of that formula, I'm going to say equals Mike print. And I'll say OK and close. Now when I do a control P, notice it will only print as many rows as there is items in column P. And if I added more or deleted some, it would automatically adjust. The question now is, what if I don't want to start my print till row 11, which I only want to print just these blank rows down here. How do I define that range? Well, we're going to use this formula here to do the same thing as we did with the previous formula. And again, I'm going to go ahead and copy it, and then we'll walk through and show you how it works. I'm going to go in the Name Manager. I'm going to edit my print and I'm going to replace that formula we had before with this one. I'll say OK and close. And now when I hit Control P, it should only want to print this range here. I do Control P, and that's exactly what it's going to print. If I, for example, add more data, I'm just going to copy this and paste it down. I should only now see when I hit Control P, 
just the last three rows of my range. I'll hit Control P, and again, that's all that shows up there. So how does this formula work? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to walk through the evaluate formula. But instead of evaluating this one, I'm going to evaluate the one below it. And the only difference is instead of saying all of column H and all of column G, I'm going to put a specific range just so the evaluate formula function doesn't have to try to evaluate thousands and millions of rows of data. It'll only just evaluate just the 26 rows. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my apostrophe here. And then I'm going to select this formula and hit Evaluate Formula. And let's walk through and see what happens. Again, we want the offset function to say, start at a certain point, go down so many rows to a new starting point, and over so many columns. And then how high do we want that range? How wide do we want that range? So the first thing we're going to do is try to find where the blanks are in column H. And we're using an index and an is blank function. So the first thing is the is blank function looking in the range H1 to H26. And if I hit evaluate, you'll see it finds a bunch of falses till it gets to its first true. And that first true in this case is going to be row 15. And it's going to go all the way down to row 26, so it finds a whole bunch of trues there because these are all blank from 15 down through 26. And I'll say evaluate. And now Excel is going to say, OK, let's match the word true with all these falses and trues. And it's going to look for the very first one when it finds its match. And when I hit evaluate, you'll notice it found it at row 15 and exactly that is where that first blank is, where it saw the is blank being true. But I don't want to go down 15 rows from A1. That would put me at row 16. So I need to subtract a 1, meaning I'll only go down 14 rows from A1, which means I start at row 15. OK, so I start at A1. I go down 14 rows to A15. I go over zero columns, and that's my new starting point. Now, how high do I want my range to be? Well, I'll take the count of the items in column G, which in this case is 17, and then the height of the items in column H, which has the blanks, and that is 14. 17 minus 14 is 3. And so finally, I get the formula offset, start at A1, go down 14 rows, over 0 columns. I want it three rows high, eight columns wide, and that's the range that Excel is going to want to print. Again, if I eliminate some more items and I evaluate that same formula, I'm just going to go through it a little faster, you'll see the main difference is that Excel found a match at row 10. Subtracting one, that means I only want to go down nine rows to my first one. And then it takes the count of those two, which is 17 minus 9, which gives me 8. So it's going to start at A1, go down 9 rows to A10, over 0 columns. So I'm still at A10. And it'll be 8 rows high, 8 columns wide. And that's the range that I'll print. So when I hit Control p now, I will get only those items that have blanks in the last column. And that's how you can accomplish this in Excel. And there you have it. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see here, please take a minute to share this post on your favorite social network. I can be found on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to stop by my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. So have a great day and happy Excelling.